I flew down to Mexico to spend seven days straight in complete darkness and isolation in a room that was built to let absolutely no light in. All right, here we go. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Whoa, no. And I did this for reasons you probably wouldn't expect. But first, I had to get familiar with living in the dark. How do I know where the toilet is? Do I just sit down and hope for the best or? Perfect landing. Unfortunately, you couldn't put toilet paper into the toilet, so... Nope. So initially I thought I would have pretty good spatial awareness, but <laughs> it is so bad. All I had was a basic room with a bed, a meditation chair, and a bathroom. No entertainment, just me and my thoughts. Food would be delivered twice a day into this box with a two-door mechanism, so even then no light would come in. It's so weird, I can't see anything. <laughs> it takes a certain level of trust to just be like, okay, I'm gonna put this thing that sounds a bit slimy in my mouth. I have no idea what that is, but I'm eating right now. Sometimes I would lose my camera. I'm sorry. But why did I sign up for this? I've done virtually every psychedelic drug. It was, um, I think, by far the most powerful medicine journey I've ever been on. In the dark room, you're producing it. Melatonin and 5-EMO and DMT. After only a few days in the dark, your brain would naturally produce DMT, an insanely powerful hallucinogenic drug that can feel like a near-death experience. And you see lies, see colors, see visions, or see past life. So me and my friends Chris and Aaron decided we just had to do it, and they were in the buildings next to me. Do you feel ready for the dark room? Did a final brain scan. Yeah. You took your brain scan machine with you? I've got it, yeah. We took a brain scan before and after the experience to see how it would affect our minds and the results were absolutely stunning but as you'll see we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into i'm gonna go sit down and meditate for a bit i feel very uneasy I'm quite nervous actually i have to admit i am scared i feel like no matter how hard i tried my mind is just so active completely out of control right now it might only be 7 or 8 p.m but i think i'm gonna try to sleep now it's day two i have no idea what time it is. Now last night I did see what looked like a moonlight and before it there were shadows. I think it might be 24 hours now that I've been in here. It's gonna be so long. Not drinking or eating anything for three days was hard and injecting myself frog poison but I think this is definitely the hardest thing I've done this far. The most unsettling thing I read was that the hallucinations in darkness retreats are not just fun and games. A lot of it is demonic creatures that are lurking in the dark and even characters from horror movies that could jump out at you. I'm starting to have very blurry black and white visuals of just different patterns that I'm seeing. Almost like in a dream where you see certain things that don't make any sense. Now I'm gonna edit something in that looks a little bit like it. Like a horse with three legs wearing a hat. What? Like right now I'm picturing different layers of the earth. There's different rocks in there. And there's kind of like fluffy stuff in between. At the top there's a moon that looks a little bit like an eye as well. It has really bushy eyebrows. And then it's... It, it moves into something else. My editing is not good enough for this. Please just imagine it. I was seeing some weird stuff. It was hard to describe. And who knows, maybe I'm right on schedule for going crazy. Well, there was definitely some truth to that. And it was just, it was just torture. It w it's day four. I don't know what to tell you. Just keep thinking about these, these insecurities that I have. I just can't stop thinking about it. It just keeps coming back and it's just this, the best way I could describe it is imagine your darkest fears and, and deepest insecurities playing like a movie in your mind over and over and over again. And the harder you try to look away, the longer it's going to play. So there's no escape. I feel in my chest. It is literally physically painful. I just want this to be over, seriously. And that continued for the next few days. No distractions, no escape. But eventually it made sense why I was going through this when we got the results from our brain scans after the dark retreat. When your brain is calm, there's zero emotional recall. So Liam, when I see stuff like this, it makes me think of a PTSD pattern. My guess is you went through some stuff in that room. As weird as it sounds, it seems like I needed this. I literally have everything I need to be fully happy. My cup is not just full, it's overflowing and I just don't see it. What a waste to not be completely happy every day. What a privilege to be alive. 
We think we're owed something by the world or by life, that we deserve something, but we already have everything. We owe something, we're already in debt. But still, the last couple of days were probably the most challenging. Man, I just wanna get out of here. I literally just wanna get out of here. Because the light visuals that I had over the last few days had been increasing, I was getting ready for the most challenging part, the DMT release, which usually happens between day five to seven. I've had more flashing lights quite intensely. They have a little more color to them. It looks like there's thousands of tiny bats flying around. I kept meditating, I kept waiting, I kept just hanging in there, but it just wouldn't happen. <laughs> and maybe it's good that it didn't happen because it did for my buddy Chris and he said, <laughs> I don't know if I could have handled that. The crying was so intense, snot is running down my face, like tears, like I can't control it. <laughs> There's no words for this, but I think Buddhists like explain this as a state of nirvana. I felt this inner light core in me and it just radiated. I felt like it was my soul. And then like the intense hallucinations came in. It was uncontrollable then. See these grids, and see these lights. It was just like seeing another realm. It was so intense that I thought, if this doesn't go away, I'm gonna have to leave the dark room. And thankfully, I woke up the next morning and I was a reset. And when the final day arrived, it's the final morning. I made it. I'm just waiting for the signal that it's 5 a.m. Coming out of that room and seeing light again was just surreal. Hello? Is it Tuesday? I can't remember a time where I felt more joy and excitement. I was like a little child. Oh, this is bright. I'm back. <laughs> Let's open the door. And the brain scan results were just incredible. Your darkroom session totally healed the brain. We might have to write this up as a paper or do something to let the world know about how you guys changed your brain. Is that Aaron that I see? There's Chris. We went to see the sunrise and it was just so beautiful. And even though it was incredibly challenging, we did it. I learned so much in these seven days. In the end, it's all about people, meaningful relationships, friends, family, loved ones. It's all about that.